So how do we find a 90% confidence interval? Because everything in, in this BBT book is referring to 95% confidence intervals. So this all goes back to what actually what we're trying, trying to do with this and with the sampling distribution. So we know the sampling distribution has some mean, or in this case some, some proportion that's the center, or the average of all the possible samples. And then we know that it varies because of normal distribution because of the central limit theorem. And in the textbook, we only use uh, um, two to represent a 95% confidence interval because if we go two standard deviations uh, below the mean or the center and two standard deviations above the mean, that's going to count for 95% of all possible samples to fall in that range. Um, and 2 is a, the rule of thumb from the 68-95-99.7 rule we studied earlier this semester. And if we wanted to find other levels of confidence, like a 90% confidence interval, we just have to change. We have to change how many standard deviations we go out. So um, I, I posted that uh, table in the forum. And if we want to find a 90% a confidence interval, we have to go out 1.645 standard deviations. And that's all from that normal curve table. So that's what we're going to use instead of 2 in the formula. I'll go to the next screen to show that. So to find the confidence interval, we have to find the margin of error. And we also have to find p hat for this. So for this, for this study, they found 139 people out of 420,096 who developed brain cancer. So for this problem, our success is kind of a sad success, 139 out of the sample size is 420,096. And we're going to make that a percentage, I mean as a decimal. So it's a it's very small uh, decimal, and what's tricky about proportions is you want to try to let your calculator carry carry the decimal places. Yeah, I rounded this, and that's probably good enough decimal places, but really I can just let this calculator carry it. So that's my p hat, and what I need need to do is I need to calculate the standard deviation for, for this uh, situation. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to try to rewrite all those numbers, but what I need to do is I need to take this value I just calculated, that's my p hat, and then I'm going to do 1 minus that value, and I'm going to multiply those two products together. Now, hopefully you get to know how to use your store function in your calculator. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll get my result. So when you subtract those two, you get something that's pretty close to 1. Not exactly. So now I'm going to multiply those two numbers together. And then I'm going to divide that by that sample size. So, and then I took the square root, and then what that gave me was a number that is very small, 0 .000, see, 0 0.00281, if I do surrounding. Now, that's this part of this formula. Then what I gotta do to, to get the confidence interval? Well, we've been using two. That's what that's what Triola in the books says, the authors in the textbooks say to use. But since this is for a 90 percent confidence interval, what we want to multiply this answer by is one point six four five. And that's not making things a whole lot larger, but what I am getting is point uh, zero, 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 
I see need another zero, don't I? Yep, zero four six two ish. And what I need to do is I need to add that and I need to subtract it to get the two bounds on on the for this question. So I added and subtracted that that margin of error from, from the P hat from the sample proportion. And this is what I result I got for results. And then I'm noticing in the question that they're asking us for percentages, and these aren't percentages. So I'm going to multiply by 100 to make these percentages. And then they ask me to round to three decimal places. So the 4 is not bigger than 5. So that's what's going to go to the left. And yes, that's what's there. And then this is what's going to go. Actually, I'm, this is 7. This 7 is larger than 5. So this... Is seven is going to become an eight, so point zero three eight percent, and that's what goes there. And then to answer this last question, because the previous, um, I guess you need to grab that. So then I'm looking at this since the previous study found that uh, 0.0317 percent of the people. Let's see, prior to the study, so the rate of cancer. So people that weren't using cell phones, this was the rate of cancer. And since that is inside that interval, in between that interval, it doesn't look like um, using cell phones has increased the cancer rates. And that's how you do it. This is almost like doing a significance test. I um, would, be, would be saying that this, this value here would be... Um, if we were going to write write a HO and H1, we'd say HO, the proportion equals, I don't have room to write it, but would be equal to this, and then would have to say, has it increased rates? So I would say H1 is, or HA is, P is greater than that value. And then, of course, because it, it would give us a very uh, large P value where it's not, in the rejection region, so we couldn't reject HO, would be the same conclusion. And that's a connection between confidence intervals and significance tests. So I hope that helps you see how to solve these kind of confidence intervals that um, have other levels of confidence than 90.